desde Cuba, territorio libre en América. Tune into a state broadcaster in Cuba and you hear one story. A story about unity, sacrifice and revolution. Las voces que forman parte de la historia y el presente de nuestra revolución socialista. Tune into the version being beamed into Cuba out of Miami. Noticias objetivas y programas de información sin censura. And you will hear another story, a different narrative about privatization, entrepreneurship and freedom to speak, to buy, to travel. Las cartas de invitación de alguien en el extranjero que costaban hasta 200 dólares en un país con un salario promedio de 20 dólares al mes. Radio Martí. This is Radio Antebe Martí, a U.S. government-controlled broadcaster based in Miami, transmitting to an audience in Cuba, targeting those sacred cows the Cuban state and its media have tried so hard to preserve, the socialist ideals of free health, education and housing. Watch Martí and those ideals are in a state of crisis. For example, the, the idea of the healthcare system. It was considered one of the pillars of the revolution, the free access to health. But by the several reporters that we have working for us on the island, across the island, we see that reality for everyday folks of access to good medical health is limited. Las pruebas más fehacientes de que la salud pública en Cuba no es exactamente lo que el gobierno castrista ha querido exponer ante los ojos del mundo. I believe that the job of a journalist is to also become a watchdog of the authorities. Only that this watchdog has never been an independent one. Radio Martí was set up in 1983 by the Reagan administration, followed in the early 90s by TV Martí. The government also created an office of Cuba Broadcasting to manage and oversee the Martí network. The OCB says it ensures that Radio TV Martí's news output is, quote, accurate, objective, and comprehensive. Cuba was not a unique target for the US's media forays. In the Cold War era, media was a key propaganda tool in the fight against communism. This station daily pierces the Iron Curtain with the truth. But Cuba has always been in a different category, its proximity to its enemy making it much more of a target. Now, the mission is clearly stated. It is a government broadcaster, and so it, its job, its duty, its responsibility is to broadcast the government policy in Cuba. We're about Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is about the, the right of people to have information, to decide their future, right? It's not to overthrow the Castro regime. It's, it's none of that. It's about the free flow of information. Imagine if Cuba suddenly had enough money to waste and started producing programs that they would try to put into the United States uh, to influence the American public. Would that be allowed? This is propaganda. It's a government trying to undo your government. If you were to ask me, has any of this worked? The only thing it has worked is upsetting the Cuban government. That's it. That's all they've accomplished. For the past 30 years, Martí has broadcast a concentrated version of a narrative that's dominated the U.S. news space on Cuba, a pro-embargo, anti-Castro line. But things are changing, and as U.S.-Cuban relations warm, a new news narrative is emerging, featuring buzzwords like détente, rapprochement, dialogue. The question is whether Martí is going to reflect those shifts or risk becoming a relic of the past. Picking up on that, President Raúl Castro called for the closure of the channel as a condition for normalizing relations with the US. He's not alone. It costs $27 million a year, and many in the US Congress see it as a waste of public money. Recently, the White House proposed to make Radio TV Martí into a separate independent body, in other words, to reduce federal funding. They say the proposal is economic, an attempt to modernize the broadcaster, and unrelated to the U.S.-Cuban political thaw. We simply propose that uh, we strike the funding for TV Marti, a program that doesn't work. This is a totally different place than years back. We are an outlet where the people in Cuba rely to obtain their news and information. Our journalists here have created relationships with the people of Cuba over 20 years, 30 years. This is not 
the outlet that you know people used to report on and it's just a totally different place it's a waste of taxpayers money and over the years it's estimated they've wasted more than half a billion dollars on things that people in Cuba don't listen to people in Cuba don't see the experts say you know if it reaches people in Cuba it's about a 1% reach in a fight for survival, the channel has grown more inventive. Radio TV Martí is trying to break into Cuba by sending thousands of DVDs, external hard drives, and USB sticks. A makeshift and semi-legal alternative to the internet. It arrives in Cuba once a week. Nobody knows exactly where it comes from or who has the original version but it's huge. While Radio Marti had been sort of historically, I'd say, having problems with the audience, I think TV Marti may be getting more and more foothold because of the other new means of uh, delivering the information. I think that we are very important in this process of, of transition, and we have to remember that Cuba has been under one rule for more than 50 years, under one party, and this process of normalizing the diplomatic relations will take time. And until there is free access to information, I think that this institution is, is perhaps now more important than ever. Defiant words, but they fail to take into account the winds of change blowing from Washington through Florida and across the Caribbean Sea to La Habana. Radio Martí's days and broadcasts look numbered. Having been born of ideology, it could well die death from diplomacy. More voices on the download now. Our viewers on radio and TV Martí beaming into Cuba from Miami. Radio Martí tuvo una importancia trascendental en la sensación de libertad que quería tener el cubano. Creo que es más importante, sobre todo en los 90, cuando había eh, una situación económica terrible. Ahora bien, con los nuevos tiempos, la tecnología ha ido sustituyendo completamente eh, lo que es la radio en Cuba y sobre todo Radio Martí. Las personas incluso dejaron de prestarle mucha atención debido a falta de credibilidad en algunos casos. Se sabía que se estaba haciendo política, no necesariamente 